Hey guys, everything new under the sun. This is an unbox of a Drobo 5N. That's right, I got my hands on a 5N off eBay. It was uh, broken for parts only. You notice that the box said 5N2. That's because the guy I bought it from went out and bought a 5N2, and he simply stuck the 5N into the same packaging and shipped this to me as a broken unit. As I later found out, um, the issue was uh, that the power supply was bad, uh, so it seems to be working for me. But quickly, um, this is a 5 drive. Uh, network attached storage um, and uh, you know it's like all the other Drobos you can have single disk redundancy or dual disk redundancy with the five drive Drobos this is the first chance this is the only chance probably uh, that I'll have to open a new Drobo box so I got this uh, you can see the, the Drobo welcome to the world of Drobo stuff and in, in this little box I also had the, the power supply so here I'm gonna go and unbox it and this is when the funny little shopping bag comes out and it's I'm glad the uh, the previous owner let me have this experience, even though he could have kept it with his new Drobo 5N2. Um, it's kind of silly the bag, honestly. Um, I have no idea what you could ever what you'd ever use it for. It's it's sort of useless, uh, but it's nice anyways. So uh, this is a real shiny unit. It was well kept. Uh, you know, nothing scratched on. There was quite a lot of dust uh, inside, however. Um, it looks exactly like the Drobo FS. You got your lights on the bottom. You've got your removable uh, front plate on it. The back has your Ethernet, just like the FS, power, and your uh, rocker switch. And your Kensington lock, of course, and, and the big fan. Um, like I say, it was pretty dusty inside. I actually did go ahead and take the whole thing apart to dust it out. Here's a look at the, the little doors. One of the doors is uh, kind of floppy, kind of the second from the bottom there. Um, the rest work fine. Um, the, do the doors are useless, um, so you don't really need them working uh, for anything. I guess they keep the dust out, but I mean, that's what the big front door is uh, as well, and maybe helps with the airflow. So here's a look uh, of it, a uh, look at the 5N uh, beside the FS. So the FS is on the left-hand side, of course, with a little sticker on the Drobo faceplate. Here I'm actually doing my Drobo migration, my Drobo disk pack migration. So I'm literally um, putting my faith in the hands of Drobo and uh, sliding all the drives out and, and sticking them into the 5N. This is supposed to work across the board and it's supposed to just work uh, like no brainer. You, you plug all, the whole disk pack in when they're both turned off and it will turn on as if nothing uh, as if you've, uh, you know, nothing happened effectively. Now, there is a performance advantage to uh, to formatting all the drives in the 5N. There's a new file format that does give you some performance improvements. But if you don't want to waste any time transferring data, then you can simply move the whole disk pack and you stay with the old FS disk format, which is a little bit slower. Uh, but it, like I say, it means you don't have days of downtime. And with the transfer speed on the FS at 24 megabytes per second, um, it goes to, uh, even my 1.5 terabytes transfers pretty slow. And I didn't want to risk losing another drive with all the grinding away of the drives during that process, nor did I have extra drives at the, this point in time. I had to send two. I had to send an Iron Wolf and another Barracuda in for RMA because they had died on me. So I went ahead and plugged them all in. Uh, I didn't have a recent backup of this, so I was really putting a lot of hope in, in Drobo that this migration would disk just work, this disk pack migration. And indeed it did. So I went ahead and fired it up. I did run it without drives with the new power supply uh, for about a day just to confirm it was stable, that it was working, you know, and I wiggled the power cord, etc., to make sure there was no loose connections and that it wasn't, you know, a sketchy device. Um, but with that new power supply, which you can kind of see off to the right-hand side laying on its side, I put it that way just so it can cool better. Um, I've had no issues. It's been up for 24 hours, as you'll see uh, when we go through the Drobo interface. I'm looking at it now over my shoulder, and all the lights are green, everything's good, um, and we're golden. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put the FS on eBay. It works 100% perfectly. Um, it's just, you know, it works at half the speed over the network simply because of the overhead of the transfer of packets. The CPU and the FS just means it's, it's slower to actually transfer uh, data. Um, and, and I wasn't satisfied with the iPhoto performance of it uh, running straight off the, the Drobo. As a backup machine, you wouldn't care necessarily about uh, speed, and it just works. So it, it was 100% working unit otherwise. I finished off by putting the rubber gasket around. It's a little, it's a little funny, a finicky. Uh, it, it falls out sometimes, and it's hard to get it back in. you got to kind of get one side in, and another corner falls out. It's kind of like a bed sheet. Uh, once you get it in there, you push it in hard. Um, then you can put the lid back on. You shouldn't have to worry about it for a long time until a, a drive dies, I guess. 
Now we're going to take a look at the, the drive speed. So I was very happy right off the bat. I was getting max. Uh, you can see in the middle there, uh, max at about 77 megabytes. I saw it maxing at initially at 98 megabytes, which was really awesome. Because the max throughput I saw for the uh, Drobo FS was about 24, 25 megabytes. So this almost quadruples my, my, the speed of transfer of data across the network from the NAS. So I'm pretty happy. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is the Drobo interface. And we'll, okay, we'll finish so we've with unboxed that. the uh, the Drobo 5 and we've went ahead and we've migrated the disk pack, uh, which literally was just uh, pulling all the drives out of the FS and putting them into the 5N. And uh, now we come to our dashboard. We've, we fired it up. Um, it seems to have uh, kept all our data, which is good. Um, I was scared there. I didn't have a, uh, a fresh backup of all that, but it's a pretty standard procedure, apparently, according to Drobo. So all is good there. I wanted to do a quick tour of the 5N interface because this is advanced over, to, over the, uh, the FS. Now this one in particular, uh, the, the 5N and the 5N2, uh, whose main difference is, you know, the extra Ethernet port, is that it shows the health of the system overall and indeed of the individual drives as well. So if you click on the individual drives, you can see the manufacturer, the vendor ID, the product ID, the serial ID. This is great because if you want to register them for warranty purposes, you can just come to this interface. You don't have to pull the drives out to look at the serial number on the top of the drive. So that is pretty slick, and that's a really handy feature of the 5N that the FS does not have. It shows you the capacity, of course, and the, the drive type. Um, you can go through, here's a 500 gig drive that I have in here. It's a Seagate. I wish it had a year on it. Uh, I don't know if you, if you can tell a year. Maybe the year is baked into the serial, you know, the serial number or something. Obviously, if I, if I go to Seagate, I could probably find that information. But it'd be really cool if it, if it had, uh, you know, cached on it the number of hours the drive has been operating for. Um, uh, you know, what year it was manufactured in, that sort of thing. I don't know if that's available to uh, Drobo at all, you know, in the firmware of the product. I imagine it's got to be there somewhere, but they don't show it, so maybe that's a, a feature enhancement. So I've got a one terabyte. You can see I have a whole mix of drives. Here's my uh, my WD Blue drive, and it also doesn't show the, uh, the RPM of the drive. This WD Blue is, um, I believe it's 5900 RPM. Um, and so it would be nice if it showed 7200 RPM, 5900 RPM, just so you had a real good idea of what you got in there. And here's the last drive. This is a Samsung. So that's pretty cool. That's drive information. You got this dry, uh, this drop down box here. If we go back to the system information, you can see the name of it. I haven't changed my the name of my network drive to Drobo 5N just because I did the uh, the disk pack migration and I didn't want to change all my settings for Time Machine. It does show you the serial number of the unit and the overall health of the unit, which is cool. Um, the, the other neat thing is the uptime. That's new. The FS does not have that. So it, it's been up for uh, 24 hours and uh, 46 minutes according to the uptime here. So far, so good. Um, it does have the indicator for the hot data cache. I do not have a, have a hot data cache in there. It would speed it up even more, which is incredible. So I have some room to improve the performance of this, which I am really excited about. Uh, right now, it seems to work um, uh, good enough for iPhoto. I'm quite uh, satisfied with the performance of iPhoto. I was not satisfied with the Drobo FS itself. Um, the, the, the speed, the transfer speeds were literally half or less with the Drobo uh, FS. So the, the speed improvements over the network are significantly improved with the 5N. It's well worth it. And of course, it shows you the active interface. Um, the capacity and things, um, you know, this is all the same. This is what you'd see on any of them. Uh, the shares is exactly the same. Um, you've got the uh, public. I've got my time machine, machine connected. The new thing here is that you've got Drobo apps right in the UI. With the FS, you didn't have access to this. You actually, actually had to drag files onto um, the Drobo apps folder in the Drobo and uh, you know do some manual install. From here, you can actually uh, click on here and click on one of them. And it will give you the option to go ahead and install it. So right from here, you can go ahead and install them, which is really slick. I plan on doing some videos about this. I want to install Apache, MySQL, and WordPress and see if I can get WordPress going on this and actually host my website from this. That would be really cool. Although I don't have the internet bandwidth for it, I think it would be really cool if and when I was able to get that, if I could actually host my own uh, website. That would be pretty cool. And of course, it has Plex and all the other um, software. There's MySQL there, Python. Um, so really cool stuff. Apache, Java, Java 8 there. Pretty cool, cool stuff. So that's different difference 
that is the different stuff with the with the five N over the Drobo FIS, FS, obviously. Tools is exactly the same. You've got your blink lights. You've got your Drobo reset. You've got your repair uh, link if um, it needs repair it, and it knows when it needs repair um, because it can't read the files. In terms of settings, the settings are pretty much all the same. We've got our dual disk redundancy on, um, and we've got drive spin down turned on so that it can actually spin them down in, in the middle of the night if it's not doing anything. So that is the same. If we go over to network here, again, same thing here. Um, you've got the exact same settings as with the FS, and I, no, I haven't changed the, the name of it, of course, like I said. Go to admin. Admin is exactly the same, um, except I think... Well, no, this enable drum apps is, I believe, on the FS as well. Um, but otherwise, that's where you change your uh, username and password. <clears throat> One pro tip is um, uh, that if you can't, if you do your disk pack migration and you can't log into the Drobo 5N, it's because your admin username does not have a capital A. Apparently, going from FS to the Drobo 5N, the 5N then requires a capital A for admin, where it did not before. So that's an interesting thing. Here's the mail setup. This is where you go ahead and you punch in your mail information. I've got uh, my uh, email going through Gmail. Um, so you punch in your username, password, etc. in there and you're good to go. Um, that is it. All the rest of the options here are exactly the same as FS, etc. And of course it shows you your, your job there. So that is it. Um, and uh, I just uh, wanted to show you that interface. Uh, the most important thing I think is uh, this cool drive information where you can kind of click through see what you got and when an error comes on when you receive an error message you have a good indication of what is uh, wrong with it or you know I hope it says something more than just bad drive but um, at least it gives you an indication as opposed to just seeing lights on the unit and not really being able to see it um, the other thing you can do is if you do have a bad drive you can immediately go to the product website punch in the serial number and see if there's warranty on it um, again without having to pull it out so that, that's pretty cool some uh, real nice interface updates they could do a lot more I think here um, but overall um, that's kind of what the 5N looks like and I believe the only big difference with the 5N too is just the extra Ethernet so that's a little tour of the Drobo dashboard so thanks for watching that's my unbox and review of the the migration of the disk pack uh, from Drobo FS to Drobo 5N I think this will be a great upgrade for my network I'm very very happy with the performance so far for it being a network uh, NAS and I'm running my iPhoto album right off it so that you know if you want a test of it that's a pretty good test and it's doing very well and it's only going to get better if I can put uh, the mSATA drive in the bottom of it the hot cache so thanks for watching guys uh, as always we'll see you guys in the next video.